my dad went to get his taxes done and he came back with the receipt and goes, I have a CPA in the house. Why don't you do my taxes? And I was like, that's not me. I don't do tax. <laughs> Let's welcome our next guest who just recently passed the CPA exam. I'm Victoria. I'm from Easton, Pennsylvania. I went to school in Binghamton University. It's in upstate New York. I did my bachelor's in accounting and I also got my MBA from there. I took the CPA during my grad school year. It was a one year program because my school did a four plus one. I did it in a three plus one. So I just had to do like two more semesters. They offer like different ways. I just, I got it done in one year, had a cool senior year and studied for the CPA. <laughs> Um, now I currently work for Grant Thornton. I do risk advisory. I uh, specifically test controls. So I do internal auditing. It's literally like in school, it's either like audit or tax. And I was like, I don't want to do either of those. And I found a little loophole and I went to internal audit. It's really cool. Very small little group of people. It's hard to like originally get into because it's not a popular career path. But I think it's interesting to do it with the inside stuff. I couldn't imagine working an audit busy season. <laughs> How did you study for the CPA exam in general? Yeah, so I actually studied the same way for all four, uh, which kind of hurt me a little when I got to FAR because it's, it's a beast. It's completely crazy compared to like audit and BEC. Um, but the way I studied was I did one chapter a week. I know that doesn't really work for people, but I took reg during my first semester of grad school. So I was like, there's absolutely no way I'm going to put more in than a week. Um, and I would do... The one, I would try to see how many modules there were. If it was like a 15, 20 minute module, I would do more than one in a day. If it was like a 45 minute to an hour long module, they take a lot out of you. So there was no way I could do, you know, sometimes more than one in a day, depending on how long they were. So I would do the um, lectures. For reg, I did do the skill practice, but after I did reg, I found that they weren't helpful. Like I didn't really need them repeating the information to me. So I went straight to the multiple choice questions. And that's really how I studied. I would just hammer multiple choice questions just like over and over and over again. I learned by memorization, which like kind of works for the CPA, but not really at the same time because you have to learn the math. But that's how I drilled it into my head. The simulations, I studied them for reg just to learn the different kinds they can ask you, like the email, just the fill in the blanks, journal entries. But then they're the same throughout all the exams and you can't, you don't know what they're gonna ask you. So I didn't wanna waste my time trying to fill in all of these tables when like I really needed to learn the concepts. So I would more do them at like the end during my review just to get some practice or if it was math, watch the videos. But I really spent most of my time just doing the lectures and the multiple choice. And then for reg and far after the end of every chapter on the weekends, I would go through and read it and handwrite my own notes and redo all of the multiple choice. For audit and BEC, since it was only six chapters, I think I waited till the end to do it just to get a full review since it wasn't as much information. But I just kept doing it on my own and writing my own notes was like the best thing that I could have done. I think I went through over a thousand flashcards. The Dollar Tree has like packets of 200 for a dollar and just for far I went through 600 flashcards so like I easily crossed a thousand between the other three. <laughs> How do you study for multiple choice questions? So when I did them since for me concepts are really easy to memorize so I would kind of get through those really quickly. I think those are great for repetition if you're trying to understand something. If you don't understand the math you have to understand what's going into the question so for me like getting the concepts was first more important for the math audit and BEC like really doesn't have that much math besides the ratios so that works really well for those tax is its own beast like reg you you just kind of have to know the tax rules you have to memorize them in order to do the questions that really works for me for those three far on the other hand it felt like every time I did like a depreciation question it was like oh here's the basic depreciation cool but then like here it's only this many months out of the year or like there was this error and I was just like, oh no, like how do I do this next step? So I just hammered the concepts first and then I went through and did the math. It took a while for FAR, you, you need more time than what you think. Like you really need to sit down and hand write the math questions. Don't just try to, like you need to understand them and actually do it and repeat it. Cause they're gonna, the, Tests can ask you so many different loopholes that you can't even picture and you really just need to understand what you're doing. I can't even stress that enough. <laughs> so when I did it, it, depending on what chapter I was on, so for the weekends, I would just redo all of the ones in the modules, all of them. And then when I was going through, I would do them all. Sometimes there's like 
40 to 50 questions and I just couldn't sit there for 40 to 50 questions when I was getting them all wrong. So a lot of the times I wouldn't even finish them until I did the review of the chapter. But then post getting through the chapter when I was like in a review stage or for foreign reg as you go through you go back and revisit because there's so many chapters i did the unlimited practice test i would always do 10 from each chapter at a time so i'd just be like far one far two 10 10 10 10 and then when i was getting ready to start practicing my timing i would just do testlets of 33 or 36 depending on which test i was on because that helped with getting the timing down but then also doing just 10 questions if far as 10 chapters so that's 100 questions a day and just repeating it as much as your brain can handle because burnout is such a real thing when it comes to studying you have to know yourself so for me doing the questions like 100 a day i would do it in the morning and at night so that's like 200 a day just for far but some people can do more some can do less it really just depends on what your brain can handle because i can only work until my brain literally says you have to stop because it's like a scientific fact you can only study for like so long i don't know what it is before you're not retaining it you're just doing it and a lot of the times with audit and BEC, because I used Becker, it got very repetitive very fast because they didn't have enough tests in like the bank. So I didn't want to spend, I didn't want to be like, let me do questions for two hours right now and wind up really not benefiting myself. I would just be like, do I understand this? Cool, I'll move on. I don't have to really do questions. I can don't, go enjoy my day. That was my goal for the day. I'd be like, I want to get through chapters one through five. And if I did that, no matter how long it took, it was a good day. If it took longer, that's something I had to work into my schedule and deal with. How do you study for simulation questions? Uh, I took an unusual route. I don't, I didn't really st study them that much. When I was doing certain chapters where it wasn't that much math, I used them to hone in the concepts because sometimes it'll be like, here's a situation, what account would you charge it to? And I was like, oh, easy. Like, let me figure out how to correlate stuff. But when it came to math, it was a lot harder because the sims are crazy. There's sometimes like so many exhibits you don't know what to do with yourself. A lot of the times I would, on the weekends, that's when I would really do them because I didn't want to waste my week trying to do them if I didn't understand the concepts yet. I would watch the like the videos that come with the people showing you how to do them. I know for far inventory, that's that taught me how to do LIFO, FIFO, weighted average. I couldn't figure it out on my own. It was useful for reg also just because it showed you like how to use the phase outs. I felt like for audit and BEC, the simulations were a lot, there's really no math. So it they didn't really help me that much. But uh, once you know the types of simulations they can ask, I feel like for me, that was where my studying needed to stop for those because you can't prepare for what they're gonna ask you as long as you know how to navigate it. That I think is more useful than like trying to learn what they're gonna ask. How do you take study notes? I wrote it down. I work best by seeing, which is why like for the simulations, I couldn't waste my time trying to do them myself. I like to see how it's done. I don't even know where my notebooks are at, the, at, at this point. Um, but I really would just go through, for reg it was a lot more, because it was my first test I didn't know how to study, but I would just write down definitions, formulas, and any, because like during the lectures, they write little like sheets and hints for you. And I would write those down. Anything I felt was important or that needed to be like memorized, I wrote that down. And it was just like notes you would take when you're in the class listening to a lecture on a PowerPoint, just like the bullets and the arrows and the numbers. I just wrote it down because that's how I'm like read and write is how I memorize, how I learn. And it was really useful for me. The flashcards, I just like to write stuff down. So flashcards were just an easy way to continue writing stuff down. I know some people type their notes. I can't learn by typing. Um, I handwrite all the way. I joined the Becker CPA Facebook group for FAR. I didn't even know that existed. And people constantly post like questions and like, can you please explain? And it's so useful to just like be like, oh, do I actually know how to do this without looking at the answers? And like, it stressed me out a little because sometimes I was like, I know how to do this, but I can't solve this question. But also people who run their own like tutoring sites are in the group and they'll comment on stuff. I know I, the day before FAR, I was trying to figure out, I think it was a uh, accrual to cash basis back and forth. And I was just like, I can't figure this out. What do I do? And uh, it was Darius Clark. He was in the Facebook group and I was like, hey, I know you have your own private CPA thing, but can I please ask you a question on how to do this? And he responded right away. And like explained it to me right then and there and it like made perfect sense. So that group was something that I wish I had for all four exams, but 
it was so useful for far. If you're not in a Facebook group, I recommend getting in a Facebook group. <laughs> my Facebook at one point when I joined that group, because there's so many people, my entire feed was just CPA, CPA, CPA. And I was like, oh my God, this is crazy. But people also make their own like PDFs of notes. They make like cheat sheets of how to explain stuff and they post them in there. So I know for like the week before, far for me, some girl posted a 45 page PDF of the entire book of her notes. And cause I didn't have final review when I was studying and I just used that and I was like, this is awesome. Like it's everything you need. And since I had to do a retake, I was like, okay, like people who have retaken, like, what do I do? This is new for me. Or people who have taken it within this past two weeks, what have, what has really been tested on? Like granted, every test is different, but you get to know what the big things are because there's so much information in these books. And a lot of the time they mention something one time and then you get stuck on it for it not to even be on your test or for it to be one question. And then I kick myself and I'm like, why did I spend so much time obsessing over this one thing when like I knew that shareholder stockholder equity was like gonna be like 40 questions like it just it helps so much when you can talk to other people and get an idea of what you're doing when you don't have any idea what you're doing which material did you study first for the CPA exam I did the lecture followed the highlighting in the notes sometimes like when Mike Brown would start reading the book, like I would just be like five pages ahead of him because he just went so slow. But then like when it was the math, that's when it was really useful. So I did the lecture. I went straight to the multiple choice questions. And then um, I would just continue going through each module. So say it was like six modules in the chapter, I would do that. Then the weekend I would go back, hand write my notes, fill out the flashcards as I went and then move on to the next chapter. And then eventually, if it was like far after chapter five, I went back and did all five. If it was audit BC, I did all six chapters. And then I would go back and I would either try to just do the multiple choice. And if I really didn't remember, I would go back again and rewrite all of the notes again. I, for far, I went through five notebooks. Like full front to back, every page used notebooks. Um, I, yeah, so because I every that's how I studied. I would go back, reread, handwrite get through all of it, do the multiple choice. Okay, let's do it again. And I would just keep doing it over and over. I swear I could have recited the book word for word <laughs> when I was studying. I remember when I was taking the exam for reg and everyone had always said, like told me that I like, was like, you're always gonna get down to two answers and you gotta think about them. And I was like, okay, like sure. All four exams, I'd always get down to two. But I remember for reg, it was about like the punishments for like your ethics and stuff. And when you go through like the Becker CPA review, they like briefly just like, oh yeah, it's just gonna be like a fine. Like, oh, it's just this. And then the exam was just like, it's this fine and penalty or this fine and penalty. And I was like, I was like, wait, like I know it's a fine and penalty, but like, I don't remember which one out of these two because they were so similar. It was like one word was different. And I was like, oh my God, you're kidding me. What were your top CPA exam study preparation mistakes? burnout I don't even know if that's a mistake but you need to know yourself you need to know how you study like with far I burnt myself out and I think that kind of attributed to why I failed the first time because I just got to a point where I was just like I know it as much as I know it and that's not a good mindset to have going into these exams you can't just have like a screw it mentality and that's how I went to that exam because burnout so really knowing yourself I thought I had like a good timing down but each exam isn't the same. I tried to treat them as they were. They're not, they all have their own material. They all get tested differently. That was a big mistake. You can't just go with how you think studying works. I have a really good memory, so I've never really struggled with studying. So when I got to FAR and I physically couldn't get the questions right, I just was like giving up. And I went with it until I took the test. Big mistake there. Um, Time wasting is definitely another. So for me, like I told you, I didn't do the simulations because that was a big time waster, the simulated exams. You need to know how you study. Like all of my mistakes were just not knowing what was good, a good way for me to study. And it takes a lot of self-reflection. You might not, like your first test, you're not gonna know it comes with time, but those are really big mistakes on my end that I tried to study one way and it's not, it's not always conducive to that. You can't memorize these exams. You have to do practice questions. I tried to avoid practicing math questions at all costs because I hate math and it really came back to bite me when I did far but it's something you really need to do um 
I also tried to like study just like throughout the day sometimes and sometimes it's fine if it's like a 15 minute module but you need to sit down and focus I've tried the whole like studying at a table with friends studying in public places it didn't work for me you you need to focus it, this is not something that you can't just like have listening to a lecture as you're having a conversation with someone at the same time it doesn't work that way you need to do your own questions you need to do it your own way don't rely on what other people tell you i think sometimes like if you get on those facebook pages you're like oh but this person said this this person said that and it's not like each test is completely different you really got to rely on yourself all my mistakes came about not really knowing myself or not trusting myself so focusing hard and really taking the time to study it's not something you can just do lightly or like mess around with <laughs> how do you stay focused and maintain the drive and self-discipline to pass this exam when i did reg because that's when i first started my mba i was that was my senior year and i was like i'm not gonna give up like going out to dinner with my friends because i had a friend who studied and he fell off the face of the earth but he was trying to get reg done in like a month and it's eight chap eight chapters i think so he fell off the face of the earth i was like that's not gonna be me i was like this is like i, I want to experience my life so that's why i really did the one chapter a week i only had classes for like i think two a day and i had fridays off so friday saturday sunday were like my entire day studying if i did something i would do something at night with my friends um but for the weekdays all my classes were like back to back in the mornings or in early afternoon and then i went to work and i worked at a call center where i just had to answer phones so i would spend the entire time i was there doing my lectures during the day so when i had like my evenings free because when you get home and you lay in bed you're just like i don't want to study like i want to go home and take a nap or after you spend all day in class you don't want to study anymore so i would really fit it in during work and then i'd go home i'd go to the gym i'd make dinner and then I'd sit back down and if I didn't finish what I wanted to during the day, because I only set like goals, I didn't set time limits. So if I finished my module, my questions, I could either be done for the day. If I felt like I wanted to do more, I would do more. I, the only time limit I kept myself on was that week. The getting each chapter done a week, Monday to Friday, and then the weekends, it was my review. And as long as I stuck to that schedule, that's what worked for me because I got through it. Um, so if I got through a module quicker and I could do another one that get, just gave me more time to review, do more questions, if it took me longer, so be it. I would always, I always waited to schedule my NTS until I was at least halfway through the material because after your first one, they come in like two to three days. Um, and I would always schedule on the study tracker at least three weeks review. Doesn't always work like that. I personally recommend taking the exams. There's like those grading windows. If you take your exam before this date, your exam, your score comes out here. I waited till the very last second for those. I would always schedule it within two to three days of that window. I don't understand why people take it at the beginning and wait like two months for their score. I don't, because if I failed, I wanted to continue studying. I didn't want to restart. I don't know how people do it. So I'd always wait. So sometimes the review would be longer if it had to get cut short. I just study more. That's how I kind of kept myself focused on it. I like school. I like studying. It's just something that was easy and good for me. It's probably because I was in college mindset mode. So studying was easy for me. I was already in the mindset. The classes I was taking, I was trying to just like, I was taking like accounting classes at the same time. So what I was learning is what I was studying for. So it was like absolutely perfect timing for me. Um, and not all of the classes were extremely hard like I, if i was taking i think i took some leadership classes where they're not like homework intensive it's like project intensive and they don't take up that much time so it's really just balancing your own schedule not getting burnt out and then for bc i had like the month and a half two months for winter break so i got bc done because i was just at home i live i went to school in upstate new york i live in the middle of pennsylvania so i wasn't near my friends so i just quickly got bc done wanted to, i think i took it on valentine's day because of the testing window so i got it, i had to push it back a little audit i wanted to get done by the beginning of april because it was before spring break like graduation was going to happen in the first two weeks of may so i wanted to just like take that time off but covid hit so here i was like about to schedule my audit exam for the beginning of april and everything shut down so i actually couldn't take it until the end of may because that's when they deemed like the cpa um like emergent like emergency like we needed to do it because of the 18 months 
So I actually didn't study for like a month and I was so, I was so out of it trying to get back. I was just like laying at home in bed every day and I was just be like, okay, I gotta get up and study. And I was like, let me just take a nap first. I'll do it tonight. And it was, it's so hard. So whoever's like studying in their bed right now at home, like it's a struggle, like everyone's experiencing right now. But I got to take that in May, it was cool, I passed. I was like, okay, let me take the summer. I took the whole summer for far. I literally took June, July, and August because 10 weeks at one chapter week is already over two months. So I went slow with it, so hard. Um, there was a, vac like I had some vacations in there where I had to stop studying, which was rough. I took it September, got the result within a week, I failed. I took about a month. I went for the next testing window, which was like in October. Um, so I took a month because I had the memory. So I already remembered the concept. It was just doing the math. So I actually spent a month doing just straight math. And I that was when I wanted to quit. I went downstairs to my mom and I was like, Mom, maybe it's not worth it. Maybe I don't need to become a CPA. And then I took the test. I was like, if I fail again, I'm done. I don't care. I'm not taking it a third time. Like, not going, like thank God I passed. Um, that was when I really wanted to quit. It was like, I just couldn't be sitting at home and trying to study and not getting distracted by the TV that's around me, my family working from home, trying to just like get the energy to study. Also, I went from reg audit, reg BC audit FAR. BC and audit are completely different than reg and FAR. They don't really have math. It's just like ratios six chapters compared to eight and ten i think i got super complacent when i was studying for those because i found those really easy because it was everything i had like learned about in class and um in my internship so i felt very prepared for those and then i went to far which is like a beast and i had to study and i it took me a really long time to find a way to actually study that was working because i got so complacent with it so if I'm going to make a recommendation to take your test, don't do audit and BC in the middle of Reg and FAR because they're easy compared to those. In what audit did you take the CPA exam? I did Reg, BEC, audit, FAR. I took Reg, audit, and BEC during my grad year. And then I took FAR. I failed FAR, so I had to take it twice full-time working. If I could go back, everyone was like, FAR and Reg are hard. And I was like, they're like, you should take one of those first. And I was like, okay cool like i'll just take reg because it didn't seem as scary as far it was super hard still two less chapters i think that's what made it easier also it's not something that a basic if you didn't take a tax class which i don't even think you're forced to in college you don't know anything about it so that's its own challenge in itself but then i took bc reg and bc like i feel like everyone says like oh they all of them go together they have all have nothing in common the only thing that's the same is like the financial ratios so you can take reg and bec whenever doesn't matter i recommend starting with far if i could go back and redo it i probably would have started with far just to get it over with because like you said you made it down to like the last minute like if i had failed like i would have had to keep going and you don't want to end with the hardest one but i took audit before far and my simulations on auto, they were about like gain, loss, contingency, subsequent events. And I felt in the Becker CPA, it only touched on that briefly. I remember going into the exam being like, okay, like the only thing I don't know is gain, loss, contingencies, and subsequent events. Please don't test me on them. And they were all of my sims. So I was like, oh my gosh, like, no, come on. Um, and then I took, and then I was studying for far and it went into such great detail. And I was like, I should have taken far first and I would have been totally prepared for audit. So I definitely, if that's a study order, do far then audit. Reg and BEC, do whatever you want, but far then audit. That's the only one I can stress. <laughs> when I left Reg, a bunch of, because I took it at school, so a lot of us all went at the same time because it was the last test date before the window closed for the grades. And they all, they all had taken them before me. So this was like their second exam. So I came out of Reg and they were all sitting there because they drove together. I was crying and they were like what's wrong and I was like that was the worst thing I've ever taken like because my one of my sims was all like um IRAs and like the early withdrawal and the only thing I knew was that it's a 10% penalty I didn't know how to actually apply it to situations and I was like I had a whole sim I didn't know what to do like I kept getting down to two answers I felt like I was guessing on everything they're like 
that's how it makes you feel. Like it does this to you on purpose. So I opened it, I got a 75 and I was like, I was like, mom, dad, like I got a 40. Like there's no way I didn't get anywhere close. And I got a 75 and I was like, okay, like this is okay. So then for like audit BEC, when you leave with that feeling of like, I had no clue what I was doing. It's so normal. I didn't cry after those. I was like, okay, like I like those I felt pretty good about. Granted, I still got the bare minimum scores, but I felt like I knew that the feeling of failure was gonna be there. When I left FAR the first time with the 66, I literally I called my friends and I was I was like, I should have left after the first testlet. I was like, there was no need for me to take the rest of the test. The first testlet was so bad. So that what I knew, but I ha I was like, you know what? I always have the feeling of failure. Maybe it'll be that. That time I did fail. So I was like, this is what it feels like. They they did it to me. They got me this time. And then I took it again and I was like, I feel better, but I don't know if I feel nine points better. I did way better than nine points. So however you feel leaving the exam, you don't know. After you take it, if you are at the end of your test window, take the week, week and a half off. Don't study it. Unless you're, you have an NTS for a second test, like don't move on. I don't recommend it. You need a week or two break, then start studying. If you have a sh time constricted NTS, get moving. Don't mess with the NTS. That's a lot of money, but take a break. When I took FAR the second time, I when I got to the simulations like the test set of two, I opened both of them and I looked at it and I was like, I have no clue what they're asking. Like, I'm pretty sure I left both of them either, like, bl mostly blank or, like, pretty close to blank. But a lot of the times with the financial statements, if you put zeros or leave blanks, you get points for that. So a lot of them, I, like, for that one, that's why I was like, I have, there was like, there's no way I passed. Like, I left so much of it blank. But because a lot of my sims were, like, statements like that, all of those blanks pushed me through a lot. And, like, I got a 79. That's all I could ask for. But leaving it blank, not knowing, like taking guesses, like you don't know what you're gonna get points on. Like you don't know what you're gonna get partial credit for. Like take the guess, don't like sit there and cry. Like there was times I wanted to just like sit there and stare at it because you don't wanna like not have enough time for your last simulation. But like you, sometimes you have to take the initiative and just be like, okay with guessing, okay with moving on. Like you're not, you don't have time to sit there and constantly debate and debate and debate. You, either have to move on or you waste your time it's you have to go through the test at your own pace and find that timing that's going to work for you and know when like you're going to be okay with clicking that submit testlet and moving on like i for bc i was doing it over winter break there's it was all the holidays so i mean i my bc book came everywhere with me in the car rides on the way there in between like the appetizer and dinner like i was sitting there with my book at the at christmas dinner studying like i had it with me 24 7 i didn't go anywhere without it that's what you have to do so i feel like i was a little blessed that i was able to start during college because i was already studying it the cph is adding another class of homework in so i just got like i went through it i had all summer for far really doing nothing before work to study the people who put it off until work like god bless your souls i don't know how they do that my friend's an audit and he was just in the middle of busy season he failed bec and was like i'm just gonna move on to audit and tried to study during busy season. And he was just like, I can't. He's like, I'm working like 70 hours a week right now. Like, I don't have time to study. Like I use, he's like, I don't even have time to breathe. And I was like, that's why like, if, I, if you can get it done before you work, like keep going. Like I did it in like kind of like a year, like a year and a month because of the failure. But if you take a break between tests or like the more you push it, the harder it's gonna get to keep going. My sister has a friend right now, she didn't wanna study in college, so she's trying to do far over winter break, but she has to pat, she wants to get all of them done before she starts work in October. And I was like, you understand, like you need to study every test back to back to back. You, you can't just take breaks if you wanna start before work. So you have to evaluate what's happening in your life, how you can study, do you have good time management? Cause if you don't have good time management, this is, this is gonna be a very hard test for you. <laughs> what did you do a day before the exam? So the day before the exam, it's so for like audit and BC, cause it was only six chapters. I did the whole go through everything again for 
reg and far because there's too many chapters that's just too much in one day i think for far i split it five and five like two days before one day before and i would wake up a decent time maybe like nine ten o'clock so i didn't want to waste my day and i didn't want to study past like 10 p.m i would try to like stop eight or nine a lot of people say like relax the day before i can't i have like test anxiety where i need to like know everything i need to know for BEC and audit, I felt a lot more comfortable with the information. So I would just do the unlimited practice test, just like 10 questions at a time for each chapter. Then I would do testlets of 33. I only did multiple choice. I think like maybe I would run through a couple sims, like through the chapters of topics that I wanted more help on, but I didn't st I didn't really do those. For reg and uh, far, I did the same thing, but I kind of mixed more of like re-going through the chapters and focusing on the ones like I didn't know that well. So for like far, government f9 and 10 i i knew that down pack i would get hundreds on everything so i didn't want to waste time studying those so i would really just focus on like the math questions that i really didn't understand when i the second time i took far i really focused on the stuff that i failed on in my what i failed on in my opinion the first time so like for me like depreciation stockholders equity like really focus on the ones i needed to that i knew i needed to know because you don't want to overwhelm yourself the, sim the simulated exams, the practice exams, I don't even think I talked about that. For reg, I tried them, and it's four hours. They're four hours. I know they're supposed to mock a test, but when I'm reviewing and I don't know what I don't know yet, I didn't want to waste four hours like trying to answer questions and wasting four hours that I could have been using to actually study trying to do questions trying to do sims and completely butchering them and getting them completely wrong um so after reg i didn't do them anymore i think for maybe audit and bec i did them like a week or two before just to get more questions but i didn't do them seriously i would click through if i knew the answer i answered it if i didn't i would try to look at like look it up online the sims i don't even know if i attempted if it was like a fill in the blank i tried it if it had math i didn't even attempt and just to, so like my scores were like all over like anywhere from like a 30 to a 60 depending on how hard I, hard I tried just to see the information and test like see what I knew people some people use them I just didn't find wasting four hours of my time doing that I would rather just do the simulated testlets where you can practice doing 33 questions at a time you can practice doing two sim like simulations three simulations I felt that that was just more conducive to not wasting your time some people feel the opposite that's totally fine it just didn't work for me so the day before i just the unlimited practice tests were my best friend i loved them um for topics that like really needed help like depreciation stockholders equity anything with math for me i'm not a math person those are the ones i would go back and actually do like all 40 multiple choice in the module but i just tried to just lightly review while like forcing it into my brain at the same time <laughs> If I was sitting still, because, like, I would try to take breaks, I would just, like, I tried to watch, like, an episode of TV while I was eating lunch, and I just started thinking of something, and I was like, wait, do I actually know this rule? And I would just, like, run to my book, and I'd just be like, yeah, I do know that, but, like, also, like, I couldn't, I couldn't relax. People say relax. I, I can't. I, even if it's just doing questions and getting hundreds on them, at least I felt like I was learning more, and even if it's just, like, one question that pops up that I got wrong and I was just like okay what's wrong like how do I do this now like I have the anxiety that like I need to know that I know that I'm doing everything I can't relax I know there's definitely people out there like that sometimes relaxing works and then I would set six alarms in the morning like I'd be like I knew what time I had as a leak so I took it at the same test center every time I knew the check-in procedures because I didn't like my test would be at nine they didn't open, like they said, get there at 8.30. I would show up at 8. I was always taking my test by like 8.20. So, so I got I got out of there early, which was awesome. But like alarm, 7, 7.15, 7.30, 7.45, 8, 8.15. Like every 15 minutes, just in case. Not that I ever overslept because I couldn't sleep anyway. I was always awake way before my alarms went off. But just in case, like I got stuck, like looking over stuff in the morning. If I took too long of a shower, if I was like eating, like... I needed every single alarm to remind me that, like, I needed to get to this test center. Because <laughs> you lay there and sometimes you get suspicious about the amount of sleep you're having. And you're like, there's no way it's not 7 o'clock. And then you check and it's like 5.30. Then you think you're sleeping for a while. And you're like, it has to be 7. And you're like, it's 5.45. Like, 
I couldn't. Like, I can't sleep. And then I'd come home. I'd lay in bed and I'd just be like, I'm done. No one talks to me. Like, I need to just, like, check out for, like, the next 10 hours. <laughs> yeah, if there was that 1.30 time slot and a 4.30 time slot, I think I would have a heart attack if I tried to wait until 4.30 to take my exam. I can't. Like, I don't know. I couldn't do it. And what advice would you like to share? So the lectures are great. I just actually told my friend this because he's doing audit. And for audit, when I looked through my book, a lot, like it was just like everything was highlighted. Or like I'd go through pages and there was nothing. But the lectures sometimes were just so long and they go so slow. If you're going through the lectures, <clears throat> some for reg and far, they're so useful because they explain the math. But when there's really no math, I say either if you can listen to them faster, I really can't do that because I can't like read and listen to them at the same time. But don't waste the time. Like, if it's an hour-long lecture, most of the time you could probably read it in 30 minutes. And if you look at the amount of time they spend marking up, it's probably 30 minutes and they're just wasting more of your time. Like, talking because they try to, like, make jokes. Like, read, do it, read the lectures. Like, actually read the page, see what they highlight, but read it yourself and understand it. Because I took BEC in one of my, like, essays with about the perpetual versus periodic, like, inventory, me like, message ways. And I knew about it in class, but in the book, I literally looked at my notes and it said, like, this will most likely not be tested. Don't focus on it. And then I had a whole essay on it. And I was like, well, thank God that, like, I knew what I, like, I knew what it was because I took accounting, like, recently and, like, I just did it. But if it's something you don't know and in the book, they don't really touch on it. So read the book. Don't focus straight on the lectures and what they tell you. You really need to read the book yourself. And don't get hung up on like, oh, they didn't highlight it. They didn't write it down. Read them. Even if you watch the lecture first, go back, read them yourself. Write your own notes. You need it in your own words. You can't, under you can't learn something not in your own way. It's rough. It's just something you got to push through. Don't, like, don't give up. I hit the point where I literally was like, if I fail, I don't want to take it again. But it's so worth it. If you already have a test pass, like once you start, it's a journey you just got to keep pushing through it it's gonna suck but that feeling of seeing the passing score is like the best feeling i think i've ever experienced i cried when i got my far score like my dad said i literally was jumping in place like running around like it was the best feeling ever and i wish everyone could experience that feeling <laughs> If you have any support routes, whether you do Becker, Ninja, Rock, like any of that, if there's like groups, join them. If you can talk to people, like I did the first three alone. I felt like anytime, like I studied with my friends because we were all doing it together. But every time I'd ask a question, I always would feel stupid if they understood it. Like asking other people for their advice, if they know how to do something, it's so much easier than trying to figure it out yourself. Like no question is stupid. I just spent an hour on the phone with my sister's friend who's studying for like just starting and she was so overwhelmed. She didn't know what to do. We all need some help. We all need a little push. Don't feel bad to reach out. I made so many friends on that CPA page and we just be like, I was like, hey, do you understand like stockholders equity? Please explain to me how this number is happening. Cause like, I just can't do it. And someone understands it somewhere someone knows a trick somewhere that helps reach out to people it's so helpful <laughs> i met a person on the facebook page and we did a call a couple times because he had already failed i think two or three times and he was getting ready for his retake and he was working tax so i don't remember if it was his busy season or not and i would just be like yeah like, this is my first time going through the stuff and he was just like me explaining it to you is help was helping him memorize it and because like obviously i have to learn it in my own way i would come up like with long-term liabilities i found a way to just like make a formula work for every single question and it just like clicked for him then and it like I, it trickles down helping other people so it's always worth it to reach out to someone <laughs> i also took an auditing class and then i worked as an internal auditor for an internship so I felt like for me, a lot of audit I had already known. So it was kind of like, that was an easier one for me. But then like, I've never done taxes. So I was just like, I don't know how to do any of this. Like that was hard far. It's just an overload of information. Even though I took, I have a bachelor's in accounting. I have an MBA with a concentration in accounting. And there was just so much accounting on there. I didn't know what to do with myself. <laughs> the CPA is not an easy thing. And like my study ways isn't going to work for everyone, but like, Everyone has their own way and 
I needed all the advice I could get. I would ask everyone, all my friends who are now taking it, they ask everyone. It's just a pool of knowledge that we all need to help each other with. <laughs>